Hey guys, Natsa is back with you for part two of the APG-70 air-to-air radar tutorial. If you remember back in part one, we talked about the basics of the radar. I walked around the screen to show you what all the different buttons did, as well as give you a quick introduction to the uh, basic air-to-air -air radar search modes uh, and, uh, and give you a feel for what the air-to-air -air radar looks like. Now in part two, we're going to talk about single target track and twiz and how you get in and out of each of those modes and, and the different ways that you can uh, lock and track targets. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so we'll show the single target track mode. We'll go ahead and take a uh, lock on our, looks like our AWACS up here at 30,000 feet. So what I'm gonna do is to get into single target track, I'm going to go TDC in. And what you'll see is it goes into what's called a mini raster down here at the bottom. That's just a very fast little scan and then Typically, you'll put the crosshair or the cursor just in front of the target and then slide it on to the target once you have uh, mini, uh, mini, uh, I'm sorry, mini raster going. So now that I've got a single target track, I know this by one, the, the scan has stopped, so now the scan is fixed. The antenna elevation is fixed, and it's shown me that I have an, uh, a target just slightly high the nose uh, at, uh, at about um, 40 miles. I'm sorry, at about uh, 54 miles. So he's up at 30,000 feet, and then the, um, the WES will now start displaying in, the, in both the HUD and the radar once I have the target. So here you can see the target uh, true airspeed is 476. He's got a hot aspect, and his heading is about 258. Uh, and then the, uh, you can see what, this is what we call the PDT, or the primary designated target. And that also is true when we go into TWIS. So you can see, the, again, the, the, the bra and the bullseye bearing range are tied to the ax symbol. So for instance, if I've got a single target track and AWACS is calling out somebody that I think may be something different than I have locked, I can still move the ax symbol around to, to marry up to the bullseye bearing range, or I'm sorry, to the bra or the bullseye bearing range to see if it's somewhere, something else. If I want to get it back onto my target, then I go coolie up, and that's called quick step, and it basically snaps to the target and then I can move it off again and then step it back up. And again, the quick step is coolie up on the throttle. So now that I've got the target, uh, what I want to show you here is the aspect. So it's shown 14 right. Uh, that means it's a right aspect. And the way, the easy way to remember that is I'm always looking at the right side of the target if this is shown right. So I can see that I'm looking at the right side of the target as he turns, and then the aspect stick is going to change and his, uh, uh, closure is going to start slowing down based on uh, the fact that he's that we're not closing uh, at each other. It's going to show incorrectly right now because I'm, I'm paused, so the closure is not going to read correctly. But you can see the target is in, the, in a turn as the aspect continues to change, and I'll let him fly through the through the beam or through the notch, and you'll see the radar is actually pretty good at holding that. So right now it's a nine, which means I'm basically he's in the beam to me, and the the radar is going to handle that pretty easily as he uh, turns through the beam. The APG-70 is really good at holding stuff through the beam. Worst case, you'll probably start seeing a MEM as it goes into what's what we call coast mode, and then uh, and then it'll pick it back on the other side. In this case, it didn't have any issue, and he's already through the beam now with a 7 aspect. So again, the aspect, uh, we had a long discussion on Discord about uh, how aspect is done in the Strike Eagle. If the target is nose onto you, it's going to show a hot aspect. And then for every 10 degrees, uh, either left or right, it's going to show. So if he was 10 degrees uh, to the right of the nose, looking at his right side, it would show a uh, 17 uh, aspect. And then as he continues to turn, it would uh, it would show that. Notice right now he's in the um, uh, he's going into that mem mode, so it's having a hard time uh, with a tail on aspect, which is not unusual uh, at long range and high PRF. Uh, so we'll. Um, uh, we'll adjust that. Right now, uh, this button doesn't have any effect with in single target track. It's going to do what it needs to to, uh, to try to adjust that. I can go ahead, auto act down, and that flushes me out of single target track. And then notice that that, that uh, receding aspect target at, uh, at long range is not unusual for the radar to uh, have a hard time. We'll uh, go ahead and pick up the tanker again at um, uh, about, what was that say, 69 miles Again, we'll go into TDC in, we'll go mini raster. Let me do that again because I moved the point. 
Let's uh, rain or let's as bump that to get a little bit quicker aspect, a uh, little bit quicker update rate. There's mini raster. I'll move it up over the target, and there's my tanker down here at uh, 20,000 feet. Okay, so let's talk about the twiz modes now. So we went through the search and the single target track. Uh, so now there's two different ways to get into twiz. So command of the radar, you can either do non-designated twiz, which is a, a basically a, a s more like a search than it is a, a designated twiz. Uh, and then there's the designated. We'll start with the designated. So we'll start with a single target track. We'll take a single target track just like we did before. So auto act in. And now we're in single target track. And then there's two different ways to enter the twiz mode. You can either go forward on the auto act or aft on the auto act, and it gets into slightly different twiz modes. So let's go forward on the auto act. Uh, forward gives you a uh, three bar high data rate twiz. You can see that down here in the lower corner where it says HDT, that means you're in high data. Uh, and it's a three bar and it's a 30 degree scan. If I go aft from any twiz mode, it always goes back to single target track. I can see that again, that all this, that twiz goes away. Then if I go aft on the auto act, now I'm in a two bar 60 scan for a twiz. There's uh, numerous more twiz modes and I use the as bump to get to the other. So if I go from a two bar 60 and as bump along the sides, doesn't matter which way you go, uh, that'll put me in a four bar 30 scan and it, then I can as bump again and it puts me back into that two bar 60. So it's just a cycle, it's basically a loop back and forth, two bar 30, or sorry, two bar 60 or four bar 30. I can go down into the lower corner with the TDC and notice now it changes the narrow if I go over the narrow word and TDC in, that will now change to a six bar 15. It's a very narrow asthma scan. Not really a lot of use for that unless you're trying to break somebody out that's in very close proximity to each other. The only way to get out of this is to as bump back out and that'll as bump back out to a four bar 30 scan. Uh, so let's go ahead and pick up the uh, other target out here. And if we go over that target and go TDC in, I can now change that to a secondary target. So you can see that this one is the PDT for primary designated target. The second one out here is the uh, uh, SDT, which is the secondary target. And you can see on the, uh, on the HUD, the, P the HUD uh, TD box will always be to the primary designated target. If I go quick step or coolie up, I can switch to the other one and that, that will switch the star out to the other target out there at, um, 50 miles at 20,000 feet. And now the previous one, it becomes the SDT. I can quick step again and swap those back and forth and realize uh, again, just like on the Hornet, uh, this is similar to the lock and shoot target. Uh, whatever the star is on it is what you're gonna shoot at. So normally you'd wanna go uh, shoot and then step to the other guy and shoot to the, um, to always to the PDT target. If it looks like these two guys are starting to get out of my as coverage, I will bump out uh, or as bump and now notice I can widen out the, uh, the asthma scan to try to keep both in the, in the same field of view. They're both going through the, the beam or the notch uh, and Twiz has a much harder time than the single target track as targets maneuver through the beam and this is actually pretty accurate. So the radar modeling is, uh, is really nice in here. If I were in single target track, uh, it would really have no, um, no issue picking that up. Okay, so that wraps up part two. Uh, we talked about single target track and Twiz and just be aware, we really just kind of brushed the surface of, uh, of both of those modes. There's uh, quite a bit more to it, uh, and we can get into a lot more details when uh, Baldic Dragon's manual comes out. He's going to be able to go and highlight uh, a lot of that stuff. Uh, in part three, we're going to talk about putting all of this together that we've already talked about. So we're going to basically set up a BVR engagement against the multiple bandits and, uh, and put it all together with search, single target track, twiz, and uh, get some missiles off at some bad guys and uh, show you how it all kind of works together uh, as, a, as a system. So that's it for me. Nasa's out, and we'll see you next time. Take care, guys. Say bye.